and you are back on the tortoise and hare experience and uh with us you just heard him a little bit uh is our guest uh brett from the nasty souls welcome man hey turtle what's going on max hi how are you nothing much i'm here in uh, noho beautiful california today and NoHo2 Studios. Thank you to Mark Doty. Yeah, this yeah. studio's great, man. Right? It's pretty trippy. So vibed place. out. All the graffiti and all the stuff. Right? Yeah. Love it. Very it's cool. awesome. So every show we like to start off with an experience. Uh, and uh, I think last last month I went first. So um, you go first, I guess, this month. All right. For your okay. experience. All right. Well, I went to the Oscars for the first time, mm. which was pretty exciting for me, you know, as an actress. I've been acting since I'm seven years old. Oh, and really? And to finally go to the Oscars was like, wow. That is know. big time. It really was. Yeah. You know, I wasn't expecting it to be like that, but, you know, I, um, I wasn't going to go. So I didn't, like, you know, prepare anything. I wasn't, like, all up in my head about, ooh, they're Oscars. You know, it was, like, kind of really last minute, yeah. jumped, uh, jumped in a dress and... Kind of, That's incredible. You know, Did you see anybody? Did I you, saw everybody. Yeah, it's like everybody's everybody. there. Yeah, it was it was amazing. That is just yeah. the coolest. It really was. It was very cool. The coolest thing for me was doing the red carpet. You know, and I've been on a million red carpets. But right. Well, the Oscar, not like that red carpet. Right, yeah, know? it was like. That's a little different. <laughs> it was 400 feet long. And, you know, I'm expecting, you know, there's all these celebrities and stuff, yeah. and I would never consider myself... And then they have all the people, like, watching, right, and there's cheering. Like, and there's, like, there's people the everywhere. There's, like, it's it's just silly. It's, it's a silliness, thing. right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, walking on this carpet, and, you know, it's, like, ten deep photographers, and they actually were, like, Max, 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 you know, and it's, like, what the, the way? hell? You know, d- is there something wrong? You know, did I do something? <laughs> no, they, yeah, they made you. me like stay You're a star there. that day. Yeah, I, you know, I scored. I scored. I was, yeah, you know, that was is really happy. Very, very cool experience. And you were talking yeah. about how you got these earbuds. Right. Yeah, uh, these earbuds that I'm wearing. If yeah. you know, camera can see, I'm wearing these really cool. We can't because it's all black and you're um, in your butt. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's you know. There's yeah, Steve I, I, Madden. I would think the gift bag would be one of the best parts. It was cool because you, know? you know they took me right off of the red carpet with a like a private assistant oh and my goodness. Took, took me up to this room where they had all of these like gifting tables so you go up and they explain what it is and they're schmoozing with you yeah. and you know and they get a picture with you and and you're just like going from table to table getting all this you know great stuff and there's like jewelry and perfume and I'm glad you, you know, got the earbuds. earbuds. Yeah, you should have gotten <laughs> like a few extra. I know, I know, but I was like, I was feeling guilty. I didn't want to take too much. You know, it's like, oh, God, man, I'm not even anybody. Why are you giving me all this stuff? What do you got? <laughs> it was I hear, fun. I hear some of those things. They're like those bags are yeah. worth. Hundreds. Oh if yeah. Not, like, yeah. No, I got jewelry. Yeah, jewelry. They give you jewelry. Uh, yeah, Are you wearing jewelry? any of the jewelry? I am not. I'm not wearing it. You actually have to go to the to the jewelry store and select your own. That is, is just like yeah. insane. I know. How cool. It was, it was very cool. And they, they, I think the thing that I liked the best was a breathalyzer test. Really? Yeah. They give you a cigar. A bottle of Chevis. They give you <laughs> alcohol and the breathalyzer. Just. That's good. Well, we got to make sure it works. <laughs> <laughs> right? That was great. That was great. Ah, that's great. <laughs> so, Turtle, what was your experience uh, since the last time? My experience has been uh, that we are now in March. Uh, it was. It's real weird because uh, January came, and January I felt just like I was running so low and then February came, but February <coughs> just came like real quick. It just showed up and then just left. Yeah. And weird. now it's like I'm in March and it's already just like t- I'm I'm kind of a little afraid that time is passing me by a little too quickly. And I know it's early in in the month, but before we know it it's going to be April. I know. And then nice. I'm just going to be like, "Oh my god, flies." Yeah. It's flying. It is. It's crazy. It really, really is. Do you have an experience uh, that you would like to share? Uh, sure. I don't know. I mean, my whole life is right now is so focused on on music and I guess uh, trying to put this tour together you know that we're doing in April has been kind of my only experience that I've been kind of dealing with and we didn't we had this thing booked and this uh, these clubs flying us out from Pittsburgh and whatnot and we didn't have any of the other shows were really solid so recently I was just freaking out about it and and just the other day we got like five shows in New York and oh, like nice. 
you know, a couple or two in Baltimore and, and a couple in Philadelphia. So all the hard work has been, uh, that's kind mm -hmm. of the experience yeah. I've been kind of going through, which is paying off. Yeah, Thank definitely. God. Definitely. And uh, if you want to go check out the band, go to their uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash the nasty souls. And you guys are on Reverb Nation? We are on Re Reverb Nation too. ReverbNation.com slash the nasty souls. So you can go check them out. Go check us out. You can check out when those tour dates are going to be coming up. We're, uh, we have a lot going on as a band. We just played the Roxy in January. We released their single, which mm -hmm. was great. And then uh, we're shooting a music video this weekend with a really nice production company. Really? So we're doing all independently. So it's it's difficult. It's a difficult game out there right now for us bands and and labels that don't want to mm -hmm. sign rock bands. Right. And right. and just watching the you know these music videos like on Viv Vivum or whatever mm -hmm. or the, these certain channels that I've been watching. There's no even rock videos out there right now. You know, rock and roll and right. that genre is very very depleted, and we're trying to change that. So, yeah. so what are you gonna do as far as to make your video rock and roll? Is it we got the hottest chick? Okay, that's yeah, that man. Makes like, it we rock got the smoking hot girl. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> and that that, that's what we thought. We were like, well, okay, we got our thing going on, but we just like we gotta get a really good looking chick. So we did get that. <laughs> well, um, who'd you get? Let's give a shout uh, out Jamie to Helgeson her. is actually her name. She's a model. She does a, a bunch of different things. You can check her out on Facebook. Nice. And she's Maybe. kind of a friend of ours. She comes to our shows and stuff. And and uh, I asked her if she wanted to, you know, you know, do some, uh, yeah. do the video. And I, I kind of have to be sort of intimate with her. So that's going to be an interesting experience. How yeah, intimate? Like, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Up to the director. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you need a stuntman for those. Yeah, stuff, right. <laughs> like, I'll do it. My body double. <laughs> My body double. <laughs> Total body. Well, let's talk about your live shows a little bit, because um, I've seen you several times, and your your crowd is outrageous. Yeah. You know, people are having so much fun. They're always singing along. You know, there's a, a random fight that'll break out just because there's girls fighting over you. Yeah. You know, it's it's fun. It's so fun. It's a it's a really good time, and we've noticed that our crowd, uh, unlike other crowds, you know, in LA, mm -hmm. where they just sit there, kind of like stare at the band. Right. <laughs> I don't know. CLA yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't sure. get it. Like, you aren't you there to have fun? You you have alcohol in no, you. No. Why aren't you? <laughs> yeah, They're there to just stare at you and be like, okay. <laughs> yeah, or there's other musicians that are looking at you like right, with their arms crossed. Mm. Hmm. But our crowd's not like that. We yeah. we kind of very encourage, and me as a you know as a frontman, I've really encouraged just to like, dude, it's here to let loose. Yeah, and, stuff. and they do. Yeah, I mean, they do. Every time I've been, there's been a naked girl. Yeah, I was some girls of, get naked every time, and they're like all of, ah, you know. We wrote a, a song called "Hot Mess" actually uh, uh, off of that kind of concept that they get they really get crazy and they have a lot of fun. And I think it has a lot to do with, you know, our sound. Our sound is very fun, you know, mm -hmm. and it it's is. got a very a groovy, uh, you know, sensibility to it yeah. where you want to move to it. Yeah, you definitely. So do. when you put on a good live show with that, with a groove. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to start taking their clothes off. I guess. Yeah, and you've had you've had several uh, <laughs> CDs out. I think you're gonna see several women take their clothes. Yeah. Off. Well, and yeah, yes. that too, that That's too. <laughs> but you know, and when you listen to um, to any of the Nasty Souls or any of Brett's stuff, like yeah, uh, you do you some solo stuff. The, too? I did. I, I had a band called Hellings with my brother. I have mm -hmm. an older brother, and we put out a record called Electric Drag. You can find that on iTunes. Mm -hmm. um, and I also put out a solo album. When I first came to uh, Los Angeles, way back in the day, I guess, um, and that was called Restless. And so I, I've had several different projects, you know, and uh, different record deals and different s sort of situations. But uh, the Nasty Souls is kind of what I've always kind of wanted. I never really wanted to be a solo act, mm -hmm. and I never really wanted to be a you know part of a thing that I had to all. I write all the songs or put it all together. You know, I've been playing piano since I was nine and guitar since I was 15. I wrote everything, but I really wanted to be part of a band, you know? Yeah. And I found that in these guys. So it feels good to have the support of like a rock yeah. group, you know? And they're all really, really good musicians. Yeah, too, which they're is all fantastic talented. Because, you know, there's a lot of bands in Los Angeles and all over the place 
that you know they put these bands together with one person who really is caring and everybody else is kind of lagging but with your band I found that you know they're all solid musicians you know yeah. especially your rhythm section just you know oh, Turpin so and Lewis are yeah. just ridiculous yeah, these very, guys very are just drummer has great meter it's you know it's fun to watch fun to dance to you're just like yeah you know, he's, on. yeah they're, and then we pride ourselves on that and I think that's why you know our crowd keeps getting bigger every time we play it's and because pretty good to look at too yeah you know max has a knack for uh all the guests that come into this show they're all pretty good looking like i don't know how she's got good happen. taste I guess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, i'm out there scouting like yeah you're scouting i wonder have you, have you ever um looked at somebody and not taking them for just the you know the look or do you like try to harness that look or like no well, you know what it is is i i always listen uh -huh. first you know and then i open my eyes okay and if they got the package then it's something <laughs> like, that we want to like you know <laughs> promote looks can be <laughs> deceiving they really can yeah. especially yeah. in los angeles yeah but, yeah you know, i can't tell who's the boys and who are the girls there's a lot That's of true. <laughs> there's a lot of people with a very little character in this town yeah I, I, well, I think we've all had our share of those people in our lives but yeah so looks can be deceiving that's true we I want to stay away from those people i saw that uh, cup that you're drinking out of and yeah. and i know where you got that cup that was at nam right yeah, yeah. But no I, this is your cup oh was it okay. yeah I, I was trying to find a cup to so yeah. put the water in and then i was like this looks cool because i can grab it from yeah. three different ways yeah i think that's Miguel's. take control right it was so funny. Is that from Nam? Did you get this from Nam? Well, somebody got it from yeah, Nam. Yeah, Nam. Uh, Miguel's. Is it? Yeah. So. Electro voice. So it's a microphone. I thought it was just interesting that it would have three handles. And well, I'm like, that's just. They were giving away free many. beer at Nam. <laughs> oh, is that and, what You know, that when was? you give free beer to musicians, you need to have three hands on that. Because it's going to. Just gonna, to keep it staying. Because otherwise it's going to dump on the brand new gear. So, you know, you got to cover that. Pretty clever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Schechter, Schechter was really smart about that, too. They were, like, you know, giving away alcohol, but you couldn't leave the room. You know? You had to just drink it all right there. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I'm staying so here you just, like, you, like yeah. chug it all down real quick. Right? Yeah. That's how it was. You know, I don't really drink, so I didn't have a problem. Do you, do you drink? I do. I do. I'm Ooh. not, like, well, he's uh, a nasty soul. Come on. Yeah, we're, you know, part of a rock and roll group. Alcohol is kind of, like, in our... You know, we use it for inspiration, I guess, or just, you know, relaxing or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to. So for all of our listeners no. out yeah, there, you don't. it's okay to be sober. It's okay to write without alcohol. It, it really okay. is. And actually, I encourage it because too much of anything, I think, just right. leads you into, you know, lack of inspiration and also, you know, problems, right. you know? Yeah. You're drinking every day or drinking every time just to try to write or doing drugs to try to write. Right. That's not what you should be doing, you know. Yeah. I encourage to definitely be about the music, you know. Mm -hmm. Music's inside you. It's gonna come out when you know when it's ready. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you don't need something to do it for you. That's true. That's true. I've seen a lot of like uh, tragedies lately with like young musicians who just can't get it together, and they're. It's so tough, yeah, man. When drinking. you come to LA. And you get so excited about right. the, you know, the, oh man, I'm playing on the Sunset Strip, or, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. And then, you know, bad habits start to form. And then when certain things don't work out for you, you know, what turned into fun turns into kind of like, you know, a reliance. Right. Just to escape that, oh man, I'm not making it in a year. I'm like, dude, it's going to take you a lot longer than a year to make it. I've been doing this for, you know, 10 years. Right. You know, and you know, it's not really about making it. It's just about progressing, you know? So always just be focused on what you're here to do. That's what I would encourage young musicians to do. And get in with good guys and good brothers. And watch out for the chicks. Because those are the ones that lead. <laughs> That's the it. It's always the girls that kind of lead me to do it. It's always the girls. It's let's always not, let's not always blame always the all the girls here. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, most of those girls are supporting these guys. That's very true. <laughs> I, oh, no, and to all, the, all of our female fans, I love you to that. Right? I absolutely do. I'm just saying you're a little bit of trouble sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> trouble, but you know, you, you know but actually, sometimes these guys... I don't think we would have any songs if, we, if you weren't like that. That's right. 
That's, That's great. right. So you should be praising those girls. Yep. So you keep me in trouble. That's, right. <laughs> That's a direct quote. Hot mess. That's a, it's a hot mess. <laughs> uh, I, I know that you've uh, you know have played like on you know the Sunset Strip, um, and uh, this just came out. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Key Club is closed. I know. I heard about yeah, that. I heard that's that. That's tragic. That that club has always, you know, had change of ownership. I've known that, and I've known all the different owners from the Pressmans to Ian was the last owner. Doesn't Ryan Cabrera own that now? I think he had a part of a percentage in it. Yeah, and I think so. But it's so sad that that would, because I played the Key Club so many times, and mm -hmm. I remember back in the day when Steel Panther was there, you know, it was like, geez, the before. Key Club was yeah. the place to go, man. When it was I, Gazzari's. Yeah, it was yeah. Gazzari's even There's before history. that. There's history. There's history in that I place. I think it'll be bought up again, but it's they got to figure out a way to, you know, I don't know, just get the right bands to get yeah. in there. I mean, I, they would go more into a hip-hop kind of, you know, more dancey. They didn't. I don't think they knew what they were trying to do. Right. And that's. I, I, that, guess I that's think what that happened. was confusing for a lot of the people that you know were looking for a place to just go and hear music and hang out. They didn't know what was going to be happening there, so they were like, you know, exactly put off by yeah. it. Yeah. Because you know there were some fights and you know. Yeah, it, it was getting a little there. like ghetto over there. Yeah, and then that, that wasn't a good scene, you know, and especially you know with uh, the Sunset Strip and the whole rock scene, you kind of want to keep that authentic and you, know. you do and I wish it was a lot more of like a hangout kind of place you know right. what it used to be I, I was disappointed in that when I first came to LA it's like when we play the Roxy we have to bring the crowd to the Roxy they don't just they're not just there right you know yeah it's like why aren't people just all hanging out on the strip again you know right and well, I think it's the parking the yeah. parking is Nick Adler I want you to buy the the part that big piece of ground right across from um, the Frankie's and Johnny's. Yeah. I think they just make a big parking right, lot where they usually have like Christmas trees or pumpkins. Yeah, yeah. What is that land doing? Yeah. I was like, if you just put a big parking structure in there, I swear to God, and then charge people like five bucks to park, that thing will be like booming. Yeah, you know, something affordable, not you know, not the twenty dollars to park. You can't yeah. go to there and then. Pay I mean, to just get by in. just doing like, when our crowd comes, it's like they have to save up. It's like ten dollars to park, ten dollars to pay, see us, mm -hmm. and then their first drinks ten bucks. You remember them yeah. said fifty bucks, and you haven't right. even gotten to see the first song yet. Right, right. And what happens if I want to buy a shirt? Yeah, you know. <laughs> and then then we want you to buy our merch, yeah. you know, support the band, and then yeah, you're like talking like I swear like a hundred dollar night. Yeah. All yeah. put together, so it's expensive. So any way to lower those costs, uh, you know, and people, you know, they appreciate that. Right. What right. are you doing to encourage your fans? Because obviously, you know, you are bringing all your fans to the party. You're packing the houses. What are you doing differently uh, with your fans? Are you sleeping with them? Are <laughs> you, you know, giving them incentives or something? Like um, that? we really. Uh, we put on a great show. That's kind of like one of the things that we really pride ourselves, like I said, on. Um, we don't really do much incentives. We don't play a lot, though. That's also one thing. Mm -hmm. We make it a special occasion, you know? Right. So that a $12 ticket isn't like that huge of a, th you know, a deal if we're playing every other month. And mm -hmm. also I find, you know, it's, it's so much cooler when you have a real big show. Right. And for us, we're like... We have a big, big rock kind of sound, you know. Yeah. What what bands do you think are like oversaturating, you know, the strip right now? Um, hmm. ones that play more than once a month. <laughs> yeah. I just don't agree. I just don't think you should be doing that. But I mean, I can understand if you open up for Steel Panther and you know there's already a crowd there mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I don't know. I I just I I find I took a lot of time learning how to promote. And book a good show book a right. good bill bills are really important to me the last one we just played I the Roxy let me decide what the bands were I don't really like that the, these bookers book a metal band with a you know a kind of acoustic act right. to uh, you know uh, it's confusing it's, and then you lose yeah. your crowd halfway and then uh, like a 70s style like what is that they, they well, you need a bill like back in the day it would be like all right all these bands sound alike they all kind of have a cool crowd, but different crowd, and then it's and then it becomes an experience, and I think that's what people appreciate about our shows is that you're coming and you want to stay and see all three bands, right? Or four bands. It's all about bands. the experience. Yeah, that's what it and is. then it makes that's it like, okay, if well, I'm going to spend fifty bucks, but that show's going to be insane. 
then it's right. like makes sense, you know? Right. Hell yeah, man. You got a really good uh, business sense. Yeah, I, I've had to learn how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know really what I was doing. But then when you kind of just jump in, you just learn what not to do and what to do. You know, trial and error is kind of like, yeah. you know, life life teaches you. Well, you have a great reputation in Los Angeles. You know, the the moment that I put up on my website that you know, he was coming in, people were like, oh, I love him. Yeah, thank, you, know, yeah, thank you. I, I knew who that was, too. Jay. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do have a pretty nice reputation. I've, I've tried to keep that, you know, there. I had, you know, when I first came to LA, I met certain individuals. I won't name names that, you oh, know. Oh no, come on, name the names. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is radio, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, my first manager was a girl named Dale Gloria, okay. who's now a booker at the Viper, which I'm, I can't get into. Every time I go to the Viper, she kicks me out, which is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Because really? it was like one of my favorite clubs. It's like the club I, always played first it was like my first gig yeah. in LA so I have to sneak in and like all the employees like they know me so it's like I have to sneak in and but if she sees me then the yeah. GM so, see, no, so let's get this out in the air Dale let's forgive yeah. Brett for anything in the past let's live in I don't the know present. what I did yeah, let's let's just let Dude, that maybe go. Maybe we should just and, call him. You know, and just rock <laughs> Maybe we should just call her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's call her right now. Yeah, well, her let's too. Call her up. Yeah. Let's <laughs> call her up. We could, we let's could, get her on the show. Can, can we call her up? Do you think we could? Um, she would not answer that phone call. I do not think. Even, even if it was from another number. <laughs> I, maybe. I don't have her number though. You know, oh, she is dang. like completely. Co- that would be so funny though. Oh, oh, that'd God. be great. That would be good. That would be good entertainment for everybody listening. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you know she's she's running one of the the biggest clubs on the Sunset Strip, and there shouldn't be any you know. There bad shouldn't blood, be. I mean, you know, we. we I mean, she out. managed me really, literally for two years, and and really did open me up to all the connections I I mm-hmm. got from like I met Nick Adler from the Roxy through her and and I got to play the Viper and the whiskey so I, d- I definitely owe a very g- great deal of gratitude yeah. towards her but you know things projects fade away you know I moved on I I grew as an artist sure. and you know I kind of left LA for a little bit and when I left like she just could not handle me leaving and I thought that was a a bad decision. Did you have a relationship with her? No, Let's I did not. I did not. A lot of people thought I did, though. Yeah, you know, that's a, a that's common a, misconception. Which is a, a shame, Managers but I didn't really care. I was like, well, whatever you want to think. If you think I'm sleeping with her, get gigs, and fine, I don't care. Right. I, I, I wasn't, but I'm like, I don't care. I just want to play, you mm-hmm. know? So, but that was, that was an interesting, you know, relationship. That was the only bad relationship I think I have in LA. So please, Dale, if you're listening, you know, let's make up. Yeah, yeah. Well, we should post. We'll post this show on the Roxy's. Uh, yeah, Facebook. Viper Room. Viper Room. Uh, the Viper Room's uh, Facebook, and be like, hey, you guys should listen to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this guy. That'd be good. Yeah. You know? Well, it's, it just doesn't make sense because you know she was a really big part of my career, my life. So it's like to you know, to hold those kind of right. grudges for no reason doesn't do make sense. Do you think she'd be working right now if we were to call the Viper Room right now and ask for her? Mm, no, no, it's probably it's a little early. too She's early. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm doing a show at the Viper Room on April 4th. Um, it's the Day of the Dead. Uh, you know, do you know anything about the Day of the Dead? You mean the yeah, Dia the Mex- de los Muertos? No, not that one. But that's the actual the real one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? that's the Mexican <laughs> holiday. Right? They came yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different. This is a, a horror convention that's going on at. Was the that the thing on your Center. Facebook that you had? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it looks cool. So I'm what was it like? That. What is it? Is it's this a it's a horror convention, and we're doing a, a show the night before at the Viper Room with like um, Jason, the first Jason, Ari Lehman. Um, I don't know if you know him, but he's a musician as well, and he's the one that comes out of the water with the like, you know, machete. And yeah. Stuff. He's like fat ass. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's gonna be really, really cool with um, Zero One with Hal Sparks. Oh, wow. And I know how. We played um, the RF Seven, cool. Sunflower Dead. Uh, yeah, so really good bands on there. Hal's uh, great. April fourth. So um, Bumper's in his band too. Bumper is in his I, band. Me and Bumper, man, we always yeah. are crossing paths at parties and after parties. Bumper Ringo, he's too funny. He's that so guy. cool. Bumper, very, very cool Bumper guy. posts every single day his workout so that he can just intimidate yeah, cool. the rest of the world by his abs. And he always says death to Cheez Its like at right. the end or something. Yeah, because he's death addicted. To yeah, he like he's loves addicted. Cheetos. Yeah. Well, yeah. I went to a party at his house on Saturday, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah, he's he has a these, very, like, very cool guy. Crazy little barbecue. 
barbecue yeah. stuff. He does that. He does that every now and then, right? He does yeah, he's Sunday got barbecues. a cool little house and you know pool, and I bring all the girls out, and we just have a good oh, time. Oh, you yeah. bring the girls? Yeah, yeah, yeah I bring the like, girls. Max, did you bring the girls? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Melissa, Tony, Rakia, you know the girls. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, you know what? It was a uh, great time just having you on and yeah, thank you so out. much and, and please have me on again whenever you can i really had yeah. a really comfortable time just talking and yeah. and uh yeah definitely uh check out uh our websites and everything facebook.com slash nasty souls and reverbnation.com slash nasty souls and check us out on tour april april 10th to the 22nd is when we're going to be out and uh look forward to uh seeing the music video soon so yes. for bedroom eyes actually i think we're going to play it yeah that's exactly what we're going to i'm play. doing your job <laughs> no, no, yeah, hey. stop doing our job it's, it's all f- one fluid you know <laughs> thing that's what i like it's like hey yeah. i'm getting paid to for you to do my job <laughs> right <I hate> <laughs> that's pretty you nice <laughs> okay so uh we leave you now with bedroom eyes